I decided to do a little report on my healing journey as well as the postpartum video that I made today. So there's a couple of things I guess I just like need to get off my chest that it's so hard for me to be patient <laughs> and like long suffering. <laughs> Um, I try to remember just how grateful I was for everything when, when everything first happened. And now I'm just like, can we be done? Can we be done with this? It just feels like my body is tired. <clears throat> my body is tired of compensating and trying to work around things. <coughs> yeah, see, there's a lot to process here. <coughs> um, it's like the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak type thing. For example, my left hand is hurting so bad. Like, I don't know if you can see how bad. Oh, yeah, that's a good... So I just have these huge calluses that are forming. And I don't know if you can see how swollen that is. But I just have these huge calluses that are forming on my hands from using my walker. Because technically I'm still supposed to be toe touch only on the left foot. Left leg. And um, my physical therapist came to my house this week. Uh, I was able to find her online. She has like a business and she works at the rehab hospital. And so I couldn't like, she couldn't like directly refer me because that's like conflict of interest or whatever. But I just found her because I knew her name. Because <laughs> she was just, so, it was so life changing to have her work on me. Literally, she saved my life, literally. And so she came to my house and again, it was just so relieving. Like I can have, I cried when I was on the table because I could move my leg. Like I had full range of motion in my left leg again, um, which I hadn't, like I couldn't. And she was like, some people who are perfectly healthy your age can't do this, but I could just because I, I don't know, yoga or or flexibility or whatever. I hadn't been able to lay my left leg onto like a flat surface. I couldn't stretch like to make like a number four kind of or like go into tree. Um, but like laying down, I couldn't, I couldn't do that before <laughs> she came. And then I was able to, after she left, I mean, she did a whole bunch of stuff, but after she left, I was able to sit at our kitchen table because the chairs are high and it was just too uncomfortable of a position to try and like balance my legs on my chair or whatever. So I was just always sitting in the dining room and feeding the baby, our baby, her meals in there. And sometimes some people would come in there. Sometimes they would eat up to the table. And there have been lots of help and relatives visiting and stuff. Um, since I got home. So there was never enough seats for all at one table anyway, but, um, sorry, I got a text message. <laughs> and, um, but it was just so awesome to be able to all eat together as a family at the same table because my legs could handle being in that position and that wasn't a structural thing I mean maybe some time has passed and so things are more but it was like um my body was still like in fight or flight mode and even like while she was doing while she was doing some of the uh therapy my right leg started shaking and she was like okay if I continue um, within a minute or so, you'll start throwing up because I've like gotten down to the nerves and, um, my body is just like, was just starting to go into fight or flight or freeze or fawn mode. <laughs> and I'm just, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to learn how to listen to my body in a different way than I ever have. 
and I am trying to stand in patience about that. <laughs> but it's hard. It's hard. I can feel... <sighs> and everyone is trying to be so encouraging, like, you're doing so well, and it's gonna be okay, you know, looking back, this will just seem like a small moment, <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> but yeah. I am grateful for the appointment that I'm going to have on the 30th next week. And I'm just really hoping that they say, oh yes, you are healing just so fast. Let's just go ahead and take those screws and rod out right now. <laughs> no, I don't think they'll do it that day. But I'm really hoping they just schedule an appointment because I think it's like, um, I think it's like becoming a hindrance instead of supporting me, it's like, yeah, inhibiting me. But that is something that I feel often, especially I used to feel inhibited, like billions of times. <laughs> I, feel, I feel the limitations of this life and our bodies here. Throughout my life, I have felt that so often. And I try to just observe it now instead of be like about it. She was also, the physical therapist was also just amazed at when I was discharged, the lack of information I was given. Um, because they didn't mention at all stretching. They didn't mention stretching. And so I thought, okay, well, if they didn't mention it, it's just not in my realm of possibility. And so I hadn't been trying purposefully to stretch. And she was like, no, like you need to be stretching. Why didn't anyone give you a list of, I mean, and I was like, well, they gave me like three or four exercises that I can do every day, but no, they never said you need to stretch this, 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 this. And she was just like, I'm sorry that we failed you. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> because they thought that a home health nurse or whatever was going to come. Like they thought a physical therapist or an occupational therapist was going to come, but it turned out there like wasn't one that could come. She, the our case person, called like twelve different companies and no one would come. And so, but they didn't change the discharge procedure to compensate for that lack of further care that I was going to have over this past month, and so because they thought someone would be coming and it's raining. It's so beautiful. Uh, so yeah, so now I have a list of stretches that I can do and I just feel like a whole realm of possibilities opened up for me because of that. So that my body doesn't just get so tight because I'm having to do all these other compensating things. And I was reminded this week of a conversation that I had with a friend. There was this um, situation happening in my life and I felt like I was choosing to sit in a wheelchair instead of running. Like I'm a marathon runner. Like I, I, I mean, I'm not a runner like some other people are runners, you know, but I love my body and I love that feeling of running and just, I feel so alive. You know, my lungs on fire and my heart pounding and just like, yes, my body is strong. And I just, I love that feeling. And so, yeah, because of, but because of this situation, I was like, I feel like I'm just sitting in a wheelchair instead of running. I almost said at the top of my lungs, <laughs> like singing at the top of my lungs, but like running at the top of my lungs. <laughs> it's like just so strong and free. And 
through the conversation, like we decided like, okay, well, you know, if you sat in a wheelchair, your arms would get super buff. <laughs> if you used a wheelchair all the time, then you would just get to work out a different part of your body. And that manifested in my life, literally. <laughs> and so the first time I talked to one of my cousins after the accident, she was like, when I heard what happened to you, I was like, just crying like Alice what are you doing like you're such a powerful creator why did you bring this into your life and and I was just like rejoicing like yes this is awesome I'm gonna learn so much and everyone I mean not like physically like she had like spiritually connected with me and was having this conversation with me I was intubated at the time so <laughs> I was not <laughs> I was not coherent to have a physical conversation but anyway, I was just like rejoicing, dancing, laughing, singing, like, yes, I praise God that I can glorify my Holy Ones through this experience. And I am striving to do that. And I know, I know, I know they see me, but it's just still hard. Pain is a hardcore teacher. And I was trying to explain to my husband last night, like it's, it's like a whole different level when there's like pain that's new in a different place. Like how my hand is just throbbing and I'm trying to compensate different ways. I, I don't want to not walk around. And so I'm like trying to hold my hand different ways. And he like found this little glove for me to wear <laughs> so that I can have at least a little bit of padding. But it's just like, it's hard to not get discouraged when a whole new thing comes about. I hope this doesn't just feel like me complaining. Because <laughs> I'm not trying to complain, but it's just... So, other than that, things are going well. Well, and even that, it's all good. It's all good. But hopefully we'll get some more answers from the medical community this next week and be able to move forward on that front. I was feeling like kind of concerned about having surgery again and because they said that they are going to intubate me again just like for a couple of hours and I was just like Ooh, okay and I haven't asked about how to prepare for that but I was asking about how to prepare for being cut again being cut open because and having something like inserted into me because that was so just like traumatizing to my body <clears throat> to have this foreign object and then it's staying here like honestly like that is okay I know I was telling a story but so the other day I was changing our baby's diaper and she was laying on the bed and she kicked my abdomen right where the bar is on the right side and I was just like oh my oh it hurt so bad and the my and it's just like still it's still swollen I don't know if the swelling is ever gonna go down it's like my body just perma was like, okay, we need more padding there. I'm just going to just like, and that's what the therapist said too. <clears throat> she was like, anytime that you see swelling, anytime that you see fat stores beginning, your body is like, oh, okay, you need some more protection. <coughs> wow. It is like beautifully raining. Hmm. Uh, and... And so, yeah, I see that. I feel that like around my hips. I'm like, okay, yeah, my body's like, don't fall again. Like, don't do that again. <laughs> I'll just put some extra padding back here so that everything can be nice and protected. <laughs> like, nice try, little body. Good job. You're trying to help. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I was asking, just praying like, okay, how can I prepare for this 
the surgery again? How can I be okay with like going under the knife again or whatever? And, and so they just showed me, it's like a splinter. You know, if there's a splinter that's stuck, sometimes you have to like dig around and like kind of almost like recut, like to open it back up so that the splinter can come out. But once you pull the splinter out, then it's just like such a relief. And when I woke up from that dream, I was like, yes, thank you. Thank you for showing me that. That's the perfect analogy for me. So yeah, they're gonna have to cut me open, but then it's gonna be really relieving after. And so I can do it, I can do it. I can hold on for that. Wow, it is really, really rainy. Like, look at that. Can you see? Our windows are probably kind of dirty, but so beautiful. Mm. Oh, and while we're at it, you can see the place where I fell. That's it. We still haven't rebuilt the deck with supply shortages and stuff. It's just the, the cost is insane. And we called insurance and I was, they, they're not going to cover anything um, because it's normal wear and tear. <laughs> and I tried all these different angles to come at it and she just kept saying, no, that's not covered. No, that's not covered. No, that's not covered. And I was like, is lightning covered? what is covered, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she actually said, yes, lightning, lightning is covered. <laughs> it was so hilarious. But anyway. Yeah. And I just heard my dog. She has been sleeping outside our door. I mean, she just, just comes up to me and licks my leg and just sits next to me. So, so kindly, just wants to help. I said this was gonna be a short little video. I guess I've made videos that are a ton longer than this, so I won't go back. Anyway, I hope you're well, I hope things are going. I feel, I don't know if this is true. Maybe it's just, my own feeling that I'm having. But I feel like since I've been posting these videos and updates and people have been finding out and listening and watching them, that it's like, oh, I know how Allison's doing, but I don't get to, I don't get to hear how other people are doing. And it's hard. It's hard to be the one to be receiving all the support and love and service and kindness in that way because I, I love to give that too. <laughs> I love to listen. I mean, I love to get to verbally process too, so thank you. But my favorite are those mutually beneficial exchanges where it just flows so perfectly. <clears throat> so I hope you're well and feel free to reach out to me. <laughs> If you can. Shabbat shalom.